Hello again. In this part of the lecture, we will discuss clinical data as collected by various clinical trials done by Neurovision over the years. Neurovision has actually started with the adult amblyopia product. The adult amblyopia application and the aim was to show improvement in adults with amblyopia, which is considered untreatable, where it's also um, a proof of concept for the Neurovision science. If Neurovision can improve um, vision of adults with amblyopia, then definitely um, something's happening there in the brain. Um, the brain functions are better, um, which leads to the better vision. So in year 2000 started a clinical trial that was done according to FDA protocols. That's a um, randomized controlled clinical trial with a um, placebo group and a treatment group. It's a double mask trial. Neither the patients nor the optometrist to check their vision, the doctors knew which patients belong to the treatment group or to the control group. Um, you can see very similar baseline information about the two groups while the treatment group, imp the vision in the treatment group improved by about two and a half lines from um, 2051 to about 2030. Uh, that should be from about um, 615 to 6. Um, nine, even worse than 615 actually on the baseline, while in the control group the vision didn't improve at all. In the treatment group we see that um, even one year after the end of the treatment without any further um, visual training, the visual acuity um, still maintained at the same level with very, very minor, actually it's not statistically significant difference. You can see also on the contrast sensitivity chart, what we see here is a standard contrast sensitivity chart where the, these are different spatial frequencies, 1.5 till 18 cycles per degree. The gray area is the normal area. Um, anything below the gray would be subnormal. Anything at the top area of the gray or above the gray will be supernormal. You can see that before the treatment started, um, the, visual, the contrast sensitivity function was um, way below the normal range of contrast sensitivity. At the end of the treatment, it was marginally in. One year at the end of the treatment, that's the green line. You can see it was well within the normal range. We can see that once you improve and the brain started using the amblyopic eye, we see further even natural improvement in contrast sensitivity, especially around these um, 12 and um, 18 cycles per degree. This clinical trial was published <coughs> Um, in 2004 at the PNAS, the um, Procedures of National Academy of Science in the United States. It was also submitted um, to the FDA and Eurovision actually received the indication to um, commercially sell this treatment for adult amblyopia in the United States by the FDA. Um, that was back in 2001. Furthermore, Eurovision continued and started a low myopia um, study in Singapore where the number of um, short-sighted people um, in the population is very high. We work there closely with the Singapore Eye Research Institute. The first pilot study was done on a group of 20 subjects with approximately um, one diopter of myopia <coughs> in both eyes, actually a bit more than one diopter. You can see that the um, um, the level of myopia didn't change through the treatment. It was minus 108 or minus 106 before, after the treatment. There is no change in the diopters, but there is a tremendous change in the um, visual acuity. They started with about um, 2040 or 612 vision, which we would expect from people who have about one diopter of myopia. But at the end of the treatment, their vision was about 2025 or 6, 7 and a half without any change in their prescription. And you can see that this improvement was also maintained one year after the end of the treatment. And you can see here also um, the contrast sensitivity function. That's the contrast sensitivity of their unaided vision. The contrast sensitivity without any eyeglasses. Um, you can see here that um, it started with marginally into the normal vision, uh, into the normal range and ended up well within the normal range and maintained this way even one year post-treatment that was uh, presented by Professor Donald Tan and et al. at different um, conferences and by the way also um, recently um, published in the Journal of um, Cataract and Refractive Surgery. 
Um, following that success, Neurovision started to commercially sell the low myopia and also post LASIK um, refractive post refractive surgery or post LASIK product. And you can see here some commercial data that was collected in years 2004 and 2005. Uh, we have here many more patients. You can see that in commercial environment, the improvement is even better than what we had in clinical trials. You can see um, it's about 2.6 um, lines, well maintained, even one year post treatment. Actually, today we have also two years, two years and even three years results um, with where the vision is very well maintained. Um, you can see that commercially, patients, once they pay for the treatment, they put more effort. It's a lot about self-discipline and motivation in this kind of treatment. And you can see the nice improvement they experience in their vision, um, both in low myopia and in post-LASIK. You can see here the improvement in contrast sensitivity. We spe especially see, um, see that in the post-LASIK where the um, contrast sensitivity, despite the fact that their myopia is not that bad, their contrast sensitivity function is um, even worse than the low myopia patients, and we see a very nice improvement um, in their contrast sensitivity function. By the way, they also fill up subjective um, quality of vision questionnaires, and we see very um, happy patients where they actually they feel the improvement in visual acuity, also in contrast sensitivity. They report um, brighter, clearer, less foggy or dusty um, vision. Again, we see even more with even more emphasis in the post-refractive surgery patients. Um, that was also published, um, the post LASIK in the Journal of Refractive Surgery back in 2006 and in, in different conferences um, in Asia and in, in the United States. We followed with a press myopia um, pilot study that was done on 30 subjects um, age between 40 to 50, actually between up to 55, with a um, near addition up to 1.5, um, plus 1.5 for near. And the aim was to um, improve their reading acuity, their near acuity, when they are actually corrected with their habitual corrected correction for distance. So those who don't need anything for distance just did it unaided. Those who have distant eyeglasses or distant contact lens simply did, the, did it with their habitual distance eyewear without any um, additional progressive multifocal lens for near. And you can see again about 2.5 um, lines of improvement in visual acuity and in contrast sensitivity. I don't have it here, but we also have follow-up information. It is well maintained despite the fact that we know that presbyopia is a progressing condition and that this improvement will not last forever, but on the long term of about six months, one year post-treatment, we see that this improvement in vision is well maintained. We had another small study that we did it with the optometry um, faculty of the Singapore Polytechnic, where we looked into supervision, just try to give um, people a vision that is better than normal vision, better than the 2020, better than the 66. Um, we just took their um, habitual eyewear, whatever they were wearing. You can see that um, in average it was a bit worse than the 66, than the 2020 vision, and try to improve that um, with the newer vision treatment. We achieve about one line of improvement. You can see here also on the contrast sensitivity. Um, they already had that uh, red line, good contrast sensitivity at the beginning of the trial, but also you can see that it was super normal at the end of the, this trial. Um, this is one line of improvement. Um, we aim with this product to those that are very aware professionals to their vision. It can be combat pilots, it can be surgeons, it can be professional um, sport players, um, where every bit of improvement counts, and we think that there, there is a room to further improve um, vision in, in this subject that again was um, presented in the Asia Arvo conference in 2007. A very interesting trial we did in 2006 was on pediatric myopia. Um, here we try to see whether we can improve vision in children when they are under corrected. You know that um, some optometrists think that children should be fully corrected, some think that they should be under corrected. We think that undercorrection may assist um, 
in the prevention of myopia, if not prevention, at least um, to alter the progression of myopia as it reduces the near acuity stress on the eye. And today there are many, um, in many publications you see that um, near uh, many hours of reading are linked to the progression of that, to the high progression of myopia. So we try to see what happens when we undercorrect the children and we undercorrect them by about one diopter. And you can see that um, when the treatment starts, we're talking here about children seven to nine years old, um, with an undercorrection of one diopter, their visual acuity was quite poor. It was about 2047, that's about 618. Um, but at the end of the treatment, we see a very nice improvement in their vision. It's about 69, 69 um, or 2030. That's a good vision, that's a driving vision. If they have been adults, they could have drive a car with this vision, even when they are undercorrected. Some optometrists do not like to significantly undercorrect the children because they will, um, of course, have a very bad um, vision. Here we see that um, even with um, undercorrection, they, they can have a good functional vision. By the way, I don't have that information here, but um, we continue to monitor these children for about two years after the end of this trial, up till the end of 2008, and we do see that <coughs> the progression of their myopia um, is much slower than the um, normal average progression of myopia in Singapore. In Singapore, for this age group, um, the progression of myopia is about one diopter per, per year, especially in the Chinese population. Um, <coughs> here we see that um, for these children, the progression of myopia was in average only about half a diopter per year. Um, which is half of the um, average progression rate in Singapore. You can see here also the um, improvement in contrast sensitivity. Another trial that we did was with the Singaporean Armed Forces um, together with the Singapore Eye Research Institute. What I have here is an um, interim analysis of this study um, which has already been completed but the final results are very similar um, to the interim result, just the, the numbers are a bit um, bigger. But you can see here we have again, um, it's a randomized control trial, a double mask with a treatment group and a control group. And you can see that we measure this uh, similar, close to two lines of improvement in vision for the treatment group, while no improvement for the control group. Again, the control patients in these studies, they do exactly what the treatment stations are doing. They come for the same treatments, they sit in front of the computer, they see displays, they need to give the answers, they have no idea that they're getting um, a placebo treatment, it's just that the Gabor patches that they see are in arrangements that we believe shouldn't um, improve their vision. Um, while the treatment group um, does exactly the same, but with personally tailored Gabor patches arrangements. So you can see here again, no change in their prescription, <coughs> but a significant, and here we show a statistical significance um, of improvement in their visual acuity. <coughs> you can see here the exact statistical analysis um, where about 65% had uh, two lines of improvement in at least one of their eyes versus just 7% in the placebo group. Um, about one of every three patients had more than two lines of improvement in both eyes, while none has achieved that in the placebo group. You can see the um, P values, um, which are very persuading. To summarize all of that, if we look here at the, um, all the applications together, you can see that in visual acuity, we achieve an improvement of about um, 2 to 2.5. In commercial, I can say to you, it can go up to, uh, it, it very often goes up to three lines and more of improvement in visual acuity. Three lines of improvement is um, exactly half the size, so it means like going from 6.6 six to, from 6.12 to 6.6, six six and, and, and so. Um, good um, improvement or even more than 100% of improvement in contrast sensitivity. We see that the results are well maintained even one year post treatment and you can see here the, um, the different functional outcomes which may be decreased in dependency on eyeglasses or delay the need for reading glasses for press myopia, increase of quality of vision and binocularity for um, post refractive and for amblyopia. We have some additional trials that we were doing. We did um, 
on low myopia in press myopia in the United States with um, Dan Dury at Kansas City with Kirk Smith um, in Atlanta and with um, Peter Shaw McMinn in um, Riverside, California, about 120 patients. I don't have the exact data here. It's very similar to what I've shown in my previous slides. Um, we did on post-cataract patients, on post-monofocal or multifocal intraocular lenses. We did that with um, Dr. Richard Lindstrom from um, Minnesota Eye Consultants. Um, Dr. Lindstrom is the president of the um, of AS, AS, A, of the um, ASKERS, the um, American Society of um, Cataract and Refractive Surgery. Um, and with John Hunkler, a very well-known cataract surgeon in Overland Park in Kansas. Very good results and excellent um, feedback from patients regarding the post-cataract applications. We also have some um, ongoing study, actually recently completed, on dry AMD um, <coughs> and other eye pathologies with um, nice improvements in visual acuity also for these kind of um, um, treatment indications.